Hey guys, it's Scott here from Horse Racing Daily, and this video is going to be if War Will can win the 2019 Belmont Stakes. But before I begin, I want to thank everyone that subscribed. We're almost to the 400 mark now. Um, next week, I plan on doing the live stream, and I've thought about doing maybe a daily live stream from like 8 in the morning to maybe 10 in the morning on uh, days that the major tracks are running. But uh, I'd like for y'all to give me some feedback in the comments about some different ideas. Uh, would y'all like to see maybe one track a day and I cover that track or go over various races that y'all want to get analyzed from different tracks? Or you know, just give me some ideas of what y'all want to do because at the end of the day it's about you know making y'all happy. So whatever y'all can think of just let me know and I'll try to do the best I can for y'all. But uh. Anyways, let's get on to War of Will, and I'm going to pretty much start my video coverage with the Risen Star, because this horse has raced a lot, but he started his career on turf, and he ran decent on turf. He deserved to probably break his maiden, but they've, they've been aggressive with this horse every step of the way. Uh, in his maiden race, he uh, got third, but you can see that the very next month they bumped him up to a grade one stakes race so they obviously was really high on the horse he finished second by three quarters of a length and then they uh, brought him over to Kane ran him in the bourbon stakes he got fourth in that race but that was a decently paced race according to Briston it was plus six plus six for above average race and then they ran him in the Breeders Cup turf race for juveniles and he got fifth but only lost by three and a half lengths so he's been very respectable on turf he probably deserved to have at least one or two wins and then they decided to switch him over to dirt and he broke his maiden on the uh, dirt one by five lengths and they ran faster in the maiden special wet than the Kentucky Jockey Club did but this race set much slower fractions so that was an impressive effort by Warrell Will then they ran him in the Lecomte Stakes, and that was his first time on dirt in the stakes race, and that was his introduction to the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, that was a very slow-paced race, but he sat third and just took over one by four lengths. I didn't think much of the field that ran in that race, but you know you're supposed to make easy work of lousy fields on the road to the Kentucky Derby, and that's what he'd done. Then he ran in the Risen Star. Uh, that was a very fast-paced race, and that's where we'll start the uh, video footage. And here we go. Let me move it up to where they load in, and he's gonna—he's one of the types that's gonna race up close on the pace he doesn't need the outright lead actually I don't think he's ever sat on the lead in a dirt race but he's gonna be up and on the pace he's the 14 horse here and he's set in a good spot about three wide and in third place and you had country house also running this race who got second in the Kentucky Derby and came back to well got first by disqualification so it was a decent field you had a uh, by my standards who won the uh, the stakes race on the Kentucky Derby undercard, the Pat Day Mile. So he was actually one of my potential long shot picks for this race, but he got a little sick in the off time. But anyways, let's get on the world. Will they run twenty three seventy one in the quarter, forty seven thirty six in the half? And right about here, he's, War Will is going to take over the front. And you'll see Country House start coming from the back of the pack. But War Will is just much the best here. He's turning for home and just going to leave the field. Uh, Country House is a good closer, so he probably made the race seem a little bit closer than maybe it should have been. But you can see that he's far back or way ahead of the third place finisher. So he just basically destroys this field. And 
Let's get onto the race chart with it. And here we go, Risen Star. 2371, 4736, 112.20, 137.87 for 144.59. The times don't look too impressive at first glance. You gotta remember that Fairgrounds is a slower track, especially this time of the year, it plays a lot slower, so you'll see a lot of 143, 144. Like Gulfstream, you could see 141 for a stakes race, whereas you won't see that here. It's just a much deeper track. But we'll get on with some uh, other race on the card. You had the three-year-old Serengeti Empress who uh, went on to win the Kentucky Oaks. Ran 144.74. See, 24.02, 47.81, 124.45, 137.89, 144.74. So see, they ran about point, what, point 20 seconds faster than that, roughly. And you have an older stakes race on the card with a had Flame Away. Uh, here is Silver Dust, Flame Away, Lone Sailor, uh, Crew Chief, some decent older horses. And they ran at 145.46. Now the pace was a lot slower 25.93, 50.74, 114.82, 139.08. And remember, Flameway, who was setting this really slow pace, came back on the on the Tampa Bay Derby Day and ran the same, pretty much same exact time as Tacitus in their races. So I think you could say that the fairgrounds prep races have been a lot stronger than the Tampa preps and uh, I guess the Wood Memorial and all that. So keep that in mind, especially if you're Betting Tacitus that just take a look at some of these past performances and or look at the race charts and see. But uh, we'll get on to the Louisiana Derby and he's the number eight horse and he's gonna break towards the back of the pack for whatever reason. And he's gonna have a bad stumble at the start and for whatever reason he just didn't show up that day. I guess he already had his points. Could uh, or I'm sorry, I got the I got the wrong horse. I think. I think he's a number six horse. But anyways, he has a bad break and just doesn't do much at all in this race. He, uh, I guess you could roll this race out and say that he already had his points. He didn't really need the race. I think they was trying to see if they could take him a little further off the pace. I think they wanted him to break. I don't know if they wanted him to break more forward and just he just didn't do it or what. They didn't really. They came out and said it, talked about the stumble. But uh, who knows, sometimes you can't always trust what the trainers come out and say in the press. But based on what he's done previous, you could throw out that race. And we'll just move on to the Kentucky Derby. And actually, first before we do that, we'll move on to the race chart for the race. Just because you had by my standards and spinoff finished one two country house got fourth 149.53 and war will was the uh favorite in this race at four to five odds and he was the sixth horse in that race but uh we'll move up to the here's the uh fairgrounds oaks 144.54 but they ran 24, 12, 47, 48, 111, 86, 137, 86, and here 23, 63, 47, 68, 111, 54, 136, 84. So it's about the same at the beginning, but the males are going to run faster. But you could say this was a, I wouldn't say super fast pace, but it was a solid pace, I guess. And so that's the turf race. 
And here's the older horses, ran a mile and an eighth, 150, 136. Corbelis won that race. He had Silver Dust, Lone Sailor. And once again, like I talked about in the Risen Star, the three-year-olds at the fairgrounds have been just showing up, these older horses. So just keep that in mind. And see, they ran about the same opening fractions, but I just don't, I don't think the older horses are that good this year. And I think the Louisiana, the fairgrounds prep races have been underrated this year. They haven't historically produced a, a lot of derby winners and everything, so they don't get counted on a lot, but I think they've been running some really good races. And that takes us to the Kentucky Derby. And he's the one horse in the Kentucky Derby. And he's going to have a good break. Uh, he's going to kind of fight with his jockey a little bit at the beginning. Actually, all through the race, probably till about the six furlongs to maybe the mile mark. But I think the horse had a lot of energy. He didn't really run in the Louisiana Derby. So this is might as well have been his first race in a couple months, first real race. So I think he was full of energy and he's definitely a very good horse. After the opening quarter, he didn't get much pace to work with at all. See they run twenty two thirty one and they'll slow down all the way to forty six and then one twelve. But he's set in a good spot right now and he's gonna get be part of the whole maximum security incident. So that's going to take him pretty much out of the race. And he, uh, I really wonder what this horse could have done if that hadn't happened. Because I didn't think when I started looking for other derby winners besides maximum security, he was one I potentially thought of, but I didn't know just because. I didn't know if he was as good as the Risen Star or what, you know, because of the bad Louisiana Derby race. But right about there's the incident, and from there it's going to knock him off the strider, too. And at this point, Maximum Security has just a lot of, you know, energy because he's got to set his own pace, but War Will's still fighting. Um, I think he kind of does all the dirty work, I guess, trying to catch him. And then the other horses that are just kind of slow and steady is going to pass him. But he does finish seventh. But once you get past, like, maximum security, like, all the other horses are just bunched up. So there's maybe a length that separates, like, third through eighth. And I think maximum security, or not maximum security, but War will definitely done all the dirty work of trying to go up there and win and that might have cost him a better place than whereas he had just sat back he probably could have took second or third and that takes us to the freak mistakes and he's the one horse once again and they're going to be flying in the preakness this is a much faster pace than the kentucky derby but uh He's going to get a good break on the inside. Bodie Express loses his jockey at the beginning. And uh, Warrior's Charge is uh, going to go out and set the pace. Uh, but basically, War Wolf is going to set the perfect trip on the inside. And see, they run 22.50. They'll run uh, just a little over 46 for the half. And... He's just biding his time, and I pick always mining and bourbon wars, my two picks in this race, and that didn't turn out too good for me, but I just wanted somebody different than the ones that came out of the derby. I thought if there was a chance for a non-derby horse to pull it off, it would have been this year. Let's see, they run 46-16. I think they run a 111 for the three quarters, but they're definitely moving at a fairly solid pace. And right about here, War Wheels is going to start inching up to the front and pretty much ride the rail. Everfast is going to follow in behind him in just a minute and ride it on up to second. 
and always mine tries to make a little move on the turn but quickly flattens out and from here war will just stress his class and just goes to the front and doesn't look back and there's ever fast coming in right behind him but war wills just much the best in this race and I think either one or two things is going to happen in the Belmont he's either going to get entered in the race and run very well or I think he's going to get scratched a couple of days before and they'll make up some kind of injury or something but if he if Mark Cassie runs him I think he'll do good if he doesn't think he'll do good he'll be scratched so I think you could put Warwell as the definite win contender but uh that's all I got for him thanks for watching guys